Gigafactory built Tesla Model Ys with the new 4680 batteries and the structural battery packs are now in customers' hands. Let's dive into some real world charging data and discuss why the new 4680 batteries are not charging as fast as I and others expected. I'm John and welcome to CleanerWatt. Earlier this year, Tesla introduced a new standard range all-wheel drive Model Y variant with an EPA rated range of 279 miles. This version is manufactured at Tesla's new Gigafactory in Texas and has a structural battery pack and 4680 batteries. Initially, this standard range all-wheel drive variant was only delivered to a few Tesla employees, but more recently, Tesla started delivering this variant to people local to the Tesla Gigafactory in Austin. One of those customers who has a YouTube channel called Spoken Reviews recently took their Austin built Model Y with 4680 batteries to a V3 Tesla supercharger to see how fast it would charge and the results were not quite as impressive as I thought they would be. According to the video on the Spoken Reviews YouTube channel, the standard range all wheel drive Model Y with 4680 batteries was able to charge from 9% to 20% in around three minutes from 9% to 39% in six minutes, from nine to 50% in 12 minutes, from nine to 80% in 34 minutes, from nine to 90% in 40 minutes, and from nine to 97% in around 50 minutes. Now, of course, going from a 9% state of charge to an 80% state of charge in around 34 minutes, that's not exactly slow, but when you compare it to the long range all wheel drive, Model Y with 2170 batteries. According to evdatabase.org and also out of spec reviews on YouTube, the long range all wheel drive Model Y with 2170 batteries is able to go from a 10% to 80% state of charge in around 27 minutes. So obviously we're comparing a 9% to 80% and a 10% to 80% number here. Those aren't completely identical, but they're close enough. And as you can see, the Model Y equipped with 2170 batteries is actually charging from a 10% to 80% state of charge quicker. Additionally, the Model Y with the 2170 batteries, when you do the math, is able to add more miles per minute of charging. Now the standard range all wheel drive Model Y's charge time of 34 minutes from 9% to 80%, once again, that's decently respectable. And here's a chart that I pulled from the CleanerWatt 2022 electric SUV buyer's guide for reference so you can see how this miles added per minute of charging for the Model Y standard range all wheel drive compares to other electric SUVs that are in the market. As you can see, when it comes to miles added per minute of charging, this is right on par with the Nissan Aria, the VW ID4, the BMW iX, the Toyota BZ4X, and also the Audi Q4 e-tron and the regular Audi e-tron. Later on in the video, I'll talk more about the battery size difference between the standard range all-wheel drive and the long range all-wheel drive Model Y variants. But I also found it interesting that when you compare the Model 3 with the LFP, the lithium iron phosphate battery pack and the charging times for that vehicle versus what we know so far about this new Model Y, you can see that even the standard range rear wheel drive Model 3 with the LFP battery pack is able to add more miles per minute of charging and is able to go from a 10% to 80% state of charge quicker than the um, Tesla Model Y standard range all wheel drive is able to do. Beyond just miles added per minute of charging, when we're comparing charging speeds, I think it's also interesting to look at how many kilowatt hours are being added per minute of charging. So as you can see on this chart, once again, I've done the math for the standard range all wheel drive Model Y with the 4680 batteries and the long range all wheel drive Model Y with 2170 batteries. And you can see based on an estimated battery size for the standard range all wheel drive Model Y of 66 to 68 kilowatt hours and that nine to 80% charge, which is a 71% charge increase. During a charging session, you would add between 1.38 to 1.42 kilowatt hours per minute of charging for the 4680 battery version and somewhere around 2.13 kilowatt hours per minute of charging with a 2170 Model Y version. Later on in the video, I'll talk a little bit more about some of the factors why I believe the 4680 batteries in this new Model Y variant are charging slower than I thought they would and slower than the 2170 battery version. Um, but one of the big reasons that we'll talk about later that affects this comes down to the amount of peak charging power that the battery pack can receive and also how long that peak rate can be sustained. 
I created this charging curve comparison chart from data that I collected on YouTube. The charging data for the long range all wheel drive Model Y, which is shown by that orange line, is from an out of spec reviews video. And the standard range all wheel drive charging data with 4680 batteries represented by that blue line is from a channel called Spoken Reviews. Both source videos are linked below in the video description if you'd like to watch them. Do know that the data on this chart is not for the entire charging curve and it doesn't actually list the momentarily peak rates that both of these vehicles were able to achieve. For instance, in the out of spec reviews video, um, that video mentioned that the Model Y, the 2170 equipped Model Y was able to momentarily reach a peak rate of 253 kilowatts. And according to an Inside EVs article that was written about the Spoken Reviews charging test with the 4680 batteries, that vehicle at some point apparently hit a peak around 227 kilowatts. But based on the data that I have from these videos on the screenshots that were shown with the state of charge and the kilowatt power of charging, you can see that the 2170 equipped Model Y is able to maintain a higher peak charge rate over the 4680 version of the Model Y. Now, if you watch some of my videos in the past talking about the 4680 battery technology, I for one expected this new battery technology to charge faster than this. I thought we would see quite a bit faster charging, maybe a 10% to 80% state of charge in somewhere around 15 to 20 minutes, not 34 minutes. That's not bad once again, but it's not what I expected. Now, when it comes to some of the reasons why these charging times are slower than expected, one of the reasons is actually right there in front of our noses, and that comes down to the larger diameter of the battery. Now, I know what you're saying right now, but this is a tabless battery, but just stick with me for just a minute. With a standard battery design with tabs, when you increase the battery diameter, this in turn increases the time needed to safely charge the battery due to increased electrical resistance, which then leads to more heat generation and potential hotspots. At Tesla's Battery Day event, they showed this chart showing that with a normal cell design with tabs, as you increase that cell diameter, you can see that line there, that red line shows that the charging time would go up. However, Tesla introduced a new design, the tabless design, which as we've talked about in the past, this tabless design results in less resistance and less heat generation and nearly eliminates the battery diameter charge problem. Notice that I used the word nearly there. It nearly eliminates the diameter problem, but it doesn't completely eliminate it. If you're comparing two 2170 batteries, one with a tabless design and one with tabs, a traditional battery, the 2170 battery with a tabless design should charge faster than the standard design. However, when you increase that diameter all the way to 46 millimeters with the 4680 battery, as Tesla showed at battery day, there actually is a very slight increase on this chart that they showed in charge time for the 4680 batteries. You have to look very closely, but if you look at that line where I've pointed there with an arrow, it's not completely flat at that point, but it actually starts tapering up just slightly. So at battery day, Tesla wasn't saying that the 4680 battery technology would charge faster. On the contrary, they were actually saying that it's almost flat, but it actually charges very slightly slower than the 2170 batteries if you look closely at that chart. In all reality, it's really impressive that a 46 millimeter uh, diameter battery is able to charge as quickly as Tesla is able to charge this new battery. And the fact that it's even close to the 2170 battery with only a 21 millimeter diameter is very impressive and is thanks to this new tabless design. So while this new tabless design is impressive, when it comes to the charging time, Tesla didn't promise faster charging and uh, we actually should have expected what we have with charging times and that's somewhat flat or maybe even slightly slower with the 4680 battery technology. Maybe I'm wrong on this, but I'm just looking at what Tesla promised and talked about at battery day. Beyond just the battery diameter, there's a second reason why I believe there's a little bit of a charge time variance between these two batteries. As I showed in that uh, battery day slide, that line was almost flat, but there was a very slight increase with that 46 millimeter diameter. Nonetheless, we are talking about two different battery pack sizes. When DC fast charging an electric vehicle, as you approach that 100% state of charge, the BMS system of the electric vehicle starts throttling down the kilowatt charging rate to protect the battery and to keep the battery cells from overcharging. 
Although there are many factors that can affect the charging rate and the charging times for a battery pack, when you look at two battery packs that have similar battery uh, chemistry, and you look at a slightly smaller battery pack and a slightly larger battery pack, the slightly larger battery pack, because it has a larger buffer, should be able to accept a higher peak charge rate and maintain that for a longer period of time. Now, when it comes to the estimated battery sizes for the long range all wheel drive Model Y and the standard range all wheel drive Model Y, according to my estimates, which are based on official EPA documents, I estimate that the battery pack size of this new variant is somewhere around 68 kilowatt hours as compared to the long range all wheel drive Fremont Model Y, which has approximately an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack. Thus, when you compare these two batteries, the 2170 batteries and the 4680 batteries from Tesla, which both have likely similar chemistry, as I showed earlier, this charging curve chart comparison shows how the larger 2170 battery pack is able to sustain a higher charge rate for a longer period of the cycle. Since there's not a substantial size difference between an 82 kilowatt hour and a 68 kilowatt hour estimated battery pack, I mean, there's a difference there, but it's not a super huge difference in battery size. The higher sustained peak charging rate that the 2170 battery pack is able to sustain over the 4680 battery pack allows it to make up for this size difference and still charge faster despite being a larger battery pack. Now, when we talk about this new variant, this brings up a question that I believe you have because I've had this question, but why would Tesla bring out a new Model Y with 4680 batteries that has a smaller battery pack apparently and also less range? Because at battery day, Tesla promised that this new battery technology could lead to up to a 54% range increase. I don't have inside information and I don't know for sure, but it seems obvious to me that since Giga Texas is still ramping up and that's going to take some time before that's operating at uh, full efficiency. And since Tesla is currently building a 2170 version of the Model Y right now as well at Fremont, because demand would naturally go to a longer range Model Y instead of the uh, current Model Y. And so Tesla wanted to eliminate that problem. And so they made sure that this new Model Y, at least initially, has less less range than the 2170 equipped Fremont built Model Y. Now there is one more possibility and this is something that I've seen other people in the Tesla community talk about, but it's possible that this new standard range all wheel drive Model Y with 4680 batteries actually has a larger battery pack than Tesla has made usable and that they've actually software locked this vehicle. That is a possibility. Interestingly enough, if you go to the EPA documentation that Tesla filed for this new Model Y variant, they show that the weight of this vehicle, the curb weight of this vehicle is 4,356 pounds. The 82 kilowatt hour long range all wheel drive Model Y has a curb weight of 4,363 pounds, which begs the question, why is the weight so close between these two vehicles despite an estimated 14 kilowatt hour battery capacity difference? In the past, before we actually saw these vehicles being delivered, I thought there was a possibility of this new Model Y having an LFP or a lithium iron phosphate battery pack that was less energy dense than the NCA nickel cobalt aluminum chemistry. However, now it appears like this could indicate that there is a software locked larger battery pack in this new Model Y. And at some point in the future, Tesla will allow the people who purchase the current Model Y to pay a little extra for a larger battery pack and they'll start shipping non-software locked Model Ys with larger battery packs. That is a definite possibility. And this weight question would support that theory. In addition, going back to charging speeds, maybe Tesla is holding back on the charging speeds and they're trying to play it safe right now with this new battery technology. And that when they have more data, maybe they will increase the charging rates and the charging speeds of this new Model Y variant. They just want to play safe right now. At the end of the day, Tesla never promised that this new 4680 battery technology would charge faster than current battery tech, but they did mention range increase, cost reduction, and also the ability to manufacture more of these batteries more efficiently to increase supply. And that's what Tesla promised. I believe that's what we'll see in the future with this vehicle. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. Also, I did show that chart earlier for the Cleaner Watt 2022 Electric SUV Buyer's Guide. And if you'd like to purchase a digital copy of the Electric SUV Buyer's Guide that I've put together in 
a digital magazine format, you can go over to cleanerwatt.com forward slash magazine and purchase your own copy. That uh, magazine buyer's guide actually includes information on around 31 electric SUVs with comparison charts and a number of helpful articles. If you'd like to find out more and purchase your own copy, go over to cleanerwatt.com forward slash magazine. Well, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community that I've set up, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.